For some reason, children don't always do what you tell them to do the first time. Amen? So Melissa was about five, and Matthew was probably, oh, I don't know, three, about three years apart. And they had decided to play a game on the stairwell of our home. And I think Melissa, as the older sister, thought it would be fun. And of course, Matt was willing to follow her leadership. And so they got on the stairs. We had a landing. I can picture it to this day. Melissa was on the landing, and she was throwing a a beanie snow hat back and forth with her brother. And I walked into the living room, and I said, you kids need to stop it before something gets, or someone gets hurt. And I walked out of the room, but I could still hear them laughing because for some reason, I must not have had the right tone. So I went back to check on them and to try to persuade them lovingly. And about that time, the hat flew over the rail, and we had a piano sitting there. And on top of the piano was a a very important uh, memento of our wedding. It was the bride and groom from the top of the cake. Remember those days? So the bride and groom was special because Kay had searched all over and she finally found it on vacation with her mom and dad. And so this was the cake topper that we had used. The beanie hat flew over and of all the places it could have gone, it hit the dome. And that's what happened. No. So... It hit the dome, and when it hit the dome, it went flying. The bride and groom took flight, and when it landed, the groom lost his head. About that time, Kay came out of the kitchen. I'll remember this as long as I live, the look on her face. You know, it's one thing for words to come out of a mother's mouth. But when no words come out, but the look is a look of death. Everybody just stops. Immediately, Melissa and Matthew began to cry as if that would help. And I can remember Kay looking at our children and saying, I don't want anything to come out of your mouth. Go upstairs. It's, I don't know why they wouldn't listen to me, but they listened to their mother. And up they went. I looked at Kay and I I wanted to console her. Guys, can you relate? I wanted to console her. I went up to her and I, the first words, guys, what do we like to do? We like to fix things, don't we? Anybody? And so I, I, I had these words ready. It will be okay. But here was the problem. The groom's head was laying way apart from the bride. And so when I went to say it to her, I went, I started... And just as I took the breath, she goes, don't say a word to me. And she went back into the kitchen. What's the moral of the story? (laughs) Don't say a word, right? That's the moral of the story. And don't throw a beanie on the steps. The moral of the story is this. Whether big or small... All of us will live through disappointments. Sometimes they're small. In fact, I told the the story after first service and somebody asked me, they said, did you ever glue it back together? And I said, no, no, it would have been a nightmare memory. I said, no. Because what happened in that moment was there was such great disappointment and in that time, as I've thought about it, it, was, it seemed so huge at the time, but God was teaching me something, and it's on the screen this morning, and this is what I want to really talk about today. Will you read this with me? To move from disappointment to delight, I must always listen intently to the voice of God, my heavenly Father. See, here's the issue. When you and I are disappointed, if we're not careful, we'll get, we'll get stuck on how we feel in the moment. You know what I'm talking about. Anger, frustration, it, it, it's, it's worry, 
We can get stuck on all those emotions if we're not careful. But what God wants us to do is not lessen what happened. We can't wish it away. But what God wants for us is to move from disappointment to delight. And to do that, I have to listen intently to the voice of God, my Heavenly Father. And I know that in this room this morning, as large as this uh, group of folk are today in this room, I know that there are disappointments. You've felt them. Sometimes it's family, jobs, school. Sometimes it's about a, a dream that you have or a goal that you've made for yourself. Sometimes you're just disappointed because of how other people talk to you and what they say to you. Instead of lifting you up, they tear you down. And when you and I really understand what God wants us to do, we realize that if we listen to him, he can help us move from disappointment to delight because disappointment is always a villain. Disappointment is always a villain. No matter what it's about, if we get stuck in it, disappointment becomes a villain where God doesn't want us to live. Instead, Jesus Christ, who, who's the ultimate hero? Jesus Christ wants us to move from where we are even and especially when it's difficult. He wants us to move from where we are to where he wants us to be because God still loves us and has a plan. Now, I thought it would be appropriate today to talk about a story with two women, actually two sisters, who are going to help us understand how to move from disappointment to delight. Because one sister focused on delight, the other sister focused on disappointment. And in the middle was Jesus. And Jesus, in this story, helps us to ask three pertinent questions in our life. So let's look at Luke 10. 38 through 39, that's where we're going to begin. The story's not very long, and I want you to listen to what's going on. The two women, their names are Mary and Martha. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Now, it seems simple, and if you think about it, this is a, a very important family because this is Mary and Martha, two sisters, but their brother, anybody know who their brother is? It's Lazarus. Yeah, Jesus would raise him from the dead, and that would happen after this uh, setting. And when we think about the story, Jesus helps us focus in on what really is taking place because at first it seems like it was just dinner as usual. Think about it. Jesus developed a close relationship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and when he stopped by, it was always wonderful, but every time Jesus stopped by their house, he brought 12 disciples to dinner with him, right? So, so it's really exciting to see because here they come, this group, they're ready to, to dine and eat together. And by reading the passage, we realize that Martha is overseeing what's going on at the house. And more than likely, Mary was her younger sister. So by reading the passage carefully, we realize they're in the kitchen and they're working on dinner together. But Mary catches the words that Jesus is sharing in the other room. And so she just bails on her sister. And she goes in to sit at the feet of Jesus to listen to what he's saying. And then, in the passage, we realize that not only was there food stirring in the kitchen, but something else was stirring in the kitchen because Martha was getting mad. She was getting mad because her sister had left her. And this is, this is, how, this is how I think this, this may have gone. Uh, Martha finds Jesus and says something like this. Can I see you in the kitchen? And Jesus comes out. And then I think Martha basically unloaded on, on Jesus. Something like this. Jesus, do you realize I'm out here preparing food for the small dinner party that you surprised me with? I mean, don't misunderstand, I'm glad you're here, but I, I can't do this all by myself. And now here is my little sister Mary, 
sitting at your feet, hanging on every word. Jesus, I I have given her the look several times from the kitchen. I've cleared my throat until it's raw. Now, here's what I need you to do. Tell my sister to get in here and help me. Isn't that how you read scripture? That's how I read scripture. Now, our very first question comes to light. To move from disappointment to delight, here's the very first question that we need to ask. Where should I sit? And our key word is, will you say it with me? Listen. Where should I sit? Isn't that an interesting statement? Because it's an interesting question because when Jesus talks to us, when we think about disappointment in our lives, oftentimes when we become disappointed and we start to get frustrated or upset, we realize that we're sitting in the wrong place. I was flying from uh, Florida from a conference and I had a transition flight in Baltimore at BWI International Airport. And it was late at night. And I was trying to get back home to Kay in Dayton. And I was going to fly into Dayton. And I, I got caught up in, in just some reading that I wanted to do. So I was seated, seated at the gate. Seated, that's good. I was seated at the gate. And as I was there, I was reading. And all of a sudden, an, uh, uh, an older gentleman in, in shorts and a, a sailing hat looked at me. And he goes, are you a professor? And, and I thought, well, that's nice. But I said, no. He goes, and, and I thought maybe we could just leave it at that, right? And he goes, well, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, I'm a pastor of a church in, in Ohio. And well, he said, uh, I don't know that I believe in God. Close the book, lay it down, and it was time for a conversation. It was a great night. We, we, we shared together. He said, my wife is a believer and she goes to church every week, and she wants me to go with her, but, but I, I, don't, I don't know that I believe in God. So as we got to talking, I realized he, what he had done for a living. He was retired, but he had been an attorney. And so we began this discussion-type debate. And as we did, he seemed to be drawn in, and then his flight was called. And I said, you really need to dig into God's word. Read it for yourself. I said, do do you have a Bible? He goes, well, my wife has some. And I said, well, you need to to dig into God's word. And about that time, a a, a good-looking young guy came over from the seat behind him and put a Bible over the seat and handed it to him. And he said, this is my Bible, but he said, I would love for you to have it. Why don't you take it with you? And the older gentleman said, I appreciate that. And then the young man said, everything that pastor has been telling you is is exactly right, and it's from God, and you should read it for yourself. And then I went over and I talked to him for just a minute, and I said, that was amazing, because the the gentleman had gotten on the flight. And I said, that was amazing. And he said, well, pastor, he said, we just listened, my wife and I, we're two police officers, and, and, we bo- and we are on the same force in, in Canada. And we're just flying through to, to our destination. And we knew that God was working. And I thought, wow, this is great. And then all of a sudden I realized I was all by myself at that gate. Everybody had boarded their flights. And then it kind of dawned on me. I wonder where my plane is. <laughs> I wonder, well, you know, where's my flight? And so... I I walked over and I realized I'd been sitting at the wrong gate. And I went up to the woman and I said, ma'am, I said, I I need to fly to Dayton. She goes, doors already closed. You won't be going anywhere tonight to Dayton. It's the last flight out. And I said, well, ma'am, I said, why didn't you call my name? I started to get what? Irritated. I mean, you could have called me Martha. Martha. I started to get irritated. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I found myself saying these words. I said, why didn't you call for me? She said, Mr. Wilkerson, I knew it was coming now. She said, we've called you three times and you didn't answer our page. 
And I started to say something, and about that time, I heard the whisper of God's voice. Do you remember? You've got to listen intently to the Heavenly Father. I heard God speak. Don't get upset. You were sitting where I wanted you to sit. What are you disappointed about? Are you Martha? Are you Mary? See, here's the thing. You're never Martha every day. And you're never Mary every day. Are you Martha? Or are you Mary? Are you going to stay mad? Are you going to stay upset that your little sister went in to hear the words of Jesus and sit at his feet? Are you sitting... Are you ready? Are you sitting where God wants you to sit? Now, I don't know about you, but that night, it was great to sit where God wanted to. I called Kay on the phone. I said, honey, guess what? I don't know what about her that's so intuitive. She goes, you're not coming home, are you? No, baby. She goes, who did you share with this time? I told her the story. She, she just said, I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. She goes, enjoy the night without me and without your luggage. <laughs> I'm married to a beautiful woman. Right? But, but you know what? There are times where God is talking to me about where I'm sitting. And I'm sitting exactly where God wants me to be and I don't like it. And see, that's when the villain of disappointment shows up. The villain of disappointment says, life isn't fair. Well, guess what? It's not. There are struggles. There are problems. There are things that have been done in you, through you, to you, that are not fair. Things will still happen. Wouldn't you love it if you showed up at church today and I said, you're not ever going to be disappointed again. But you see, if you're going to live life and you're going to do it with adventure and passion and you're going to trust God with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways, acknowledge Him. If you're going to do that, disappointment will come. And you're not going to like it. And I'm not either. But we've got to answer the question. Are you sitting in the right spot? And the only right spot is where God wants us to sit. Sometimes we put ourselves in the right spot, don't we? Just like Mary. And then sometimes we're like Martha. And we're not sitting where we want to sit. So Martha was not happy. And she wanted Jesus to fix it. But Jesus... And Martha had more to work out. Let, let's go to the next question. And let's look at chapter 10, 41 through 42. And we're going to cut this last verse in half for now. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Wow. Come on, Jesus. You can do better than that. Why don't you, you know, come on. Why don't you, you know, pat me on the shoulder? Give me a a Jesus hug, right? Just just draw me in. Because are you like me? When I'm disappointed, sometimes I like to wallow in it. Is anybody in the house? I mean, sometimes I just want to wallow in it. That, you, you know, we're all liars at times. But somebody comes up to you and say, are you all right? And what do we say? I'm what? Fine. And everybody knows we're not fine. You see the issue? I'm wallowing in it right now. And then, I, I, here's the thing. I like to fix things. Any men in the house? I want to fix things. When Kay came out, I wanted to tell her when, when, when the groom lost his head. I wanted to tell her, honey, we can glue it back on. You'll never know it. It would have always looked misplaced. 
but I wanted to fix it. See, here's the thing that we have to understand. When Jesus talks to Martha, and, and, and they're having this moment, he says to her, you're distracted. In the Greek, it actually, the word can be translated anxious. When we're disappointed, we become anxious. Every one of us. Now, depending on how you share it, depending on how you let that out, that's all you. We'll all, we'll all show our, our disappointment in different ways. Some people are quiet. Some people vent. Some people get mad. Some people walk away. There are people that got to talk about it, and then there are people that don't want to talk at all. But here's the reality. Jesus is still right there. In fact, did you hear what Martha said to Jesus? Don't you care? Man, when I'm disappointed, I'm like, Jesus, why didn't you answer my prayer? Why didn't you do what I wanted you to do? I'm not asking anything from you that's, that's off the wall or weird. I just, God, why don't you do this? See, I know his plans are greater than mine. I know his ways are higher than mine. But in this moment, here is Martha wanting Jesus to do what she wanted. And Jesus said, "Mm -mm. no, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make your sister come in here with you. And then all of a sudden this, this question arises. What's your worry? Don't you want to just look at me like after four weeks and say, Pastor, do we have to talk about worry again? What's your worry? Now think about it. Dig deep, okay? In your disappointment, whatever your disappointment is, there's a worry that something isn't going to work out the way that you and I want it to. Health, job, money. Uh, in, in, that dis, in that villain of disappointment is this, this worry that things aren't going to work out. And you see, here's the thing that Martha was missing. Just like Mary was trusting in Jesus and sitting at his feet, that's exactly what Martha could have done too. Martha was stressed out. She was irritated, don't you care? She convinced herself that the ultimate superhero was not Jesus, it was her. She was the ultimate superhero of serving. And then add to this, that this is just Drew's guess, are you okay with this? I just wonder if, if Martha was a perfectionist. Any perfectionist? It's got, it's got to be, you know, you know what perfection is. It's not just the right way. It's, it's my way. And I wonder if Martha was thinking, I, I, I got this all done. This is, this, I've got this all planned. This is how I've got my life planned. This is how I've got the dinner party planned. This is the food. This is everything. And part of my plan is that my little sister is going to be in here working with me to get this food done. And then of all things, she wants to go listen to Jesus. You ever spend a lot of money on a meal? Anybody? Anybody ever drop a couple hundred bucks on a meal? Right? Have you done that? I have a question. Do you remember what you got? Do, do you remember? Do you remember all the details of the food? Do you remember it all? Right? In fact, by the way, have any of you ever paid a lot of money for a meal and it wasn't good? How many of you remember those meals more? Right? In fact, it was funny because for my birthday a couple of weeks ago, we went out. We went out to a great restaurant. And uh, I paid, I think we paid for a side dish, I think we paid $9 for mashed potatoes. And they weren't as good as K's. And, and here, here's the thing. You know what? Every time I've been to a great meal, even if I remember a few items of what's been on the menu, it's not the food. It's the memory of the moment that matters. It's who I was with. It's the conversation we had. It's what we're celebrating. 
Wrap your mind around this. Are you ready? It wasn't that Jesus didn't want Martha to serve. It's just that Jesus wanted Martha to choose joyfully. Be in the kitchen joyfully. If you want to serve, be in the kitchen and do it with joy. But it's okay if you want to come out of the kitchen and you want to sit and listen too. What are you worried about? What's going on? And see, I really think it was difficult for her because in the moment, Jesus said, Martha, it's not about what you want. It's about what's best. Look at this last part of the verse. Mary has chosen what is better, and I will not, and it will not be taken away from her. Our very first word was listen. The next word you saw was focus. Where is, where is your focus? And then the last word, will you say this last word with me? Delight. Now, I like the, I like the Greek word. The Greek word for better is simply good. Jesus said, I'm not going to, to give in to your demands. Man, I wish Jesus would do that for me, don't you? Jesus, just give in to my demands because I know what's best for me. But you see, it's a relationship of trust. It's a relationship of depending completely on Jesus. And here's what Jesus was saying to her. He was saying, Martha, I, I want you to enjoy what is good. I don't want you to get distracted by all the other things that are occurring in your heart and mind because you're disappointed. Man, we have all been treated in such difficult ways. I remember a time I wasn't with uh, Kay when she took a group of teenagers to Atlanta. I wasn't, I wasn't with her at all. But they went to feed homeless men. And there were about a thousand homeless men in the shelter. And they went to help a director and they were there to, to serve meals out into the public and to help. And so they, they had to be very economical in how they, they fed the homeless men every night. And they had a large cooler of chili. It was, it was a large cooler of chili. And so the director asked Matt and another boy uh, Andy to carry the cooler in and it was heavy and, and, and they were trying their best but then all of a sudden they dropped the cooler of chili. The, this is the director's answer. We've got thousand men to feed tonight and you drop the chili, someone isn't going to be able to eat tonight. Do you know who rallied? See, that was a Martha answer, wasn't it? You know who the, the Mary answer came from? The homeless men. They came over and they said, we'll help you clean it up. And every man ate that night. Now, now hear what I'm going to say to you. When you're disappointed, when you're overwhelmed with your emotions, when you're on overload, we leak. Anybody here? And then all of a sudden, disappointment becomes a villain, not just to us, but to everybody you're living with. It leaks out all over everyone. Because, see, disappointment is rooted in fear and worry and struggle. And, and, and when we don't want to own it, we're missing out on what is good from God. And it's hard. It's hard. It's not easy to own it. But that's why Jesus wanted to help Martha, not by appeasing her, not, not, by, not by patronizing her, but he wanted her to choose what is best, what is good. Psalm 37, 4 has been a life verse for me. Will you read it? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Wow. 
I love that verse. Do you know what the word delight means in the Hebrew? The word delight in the Hebrew means literally, it means to be bent toward, to purpose and find pleasure. To be bent toward and to purpose and to find pleasure. You know, if we're not careful, we'll make disappointment our hero. You know people like that? Who have always lived disappointment to disappointment to disappointment. They've made disappointment a villain into their hero. But instead, Jesus wants to be our ultimate hero. And to do that, especially when we're disappointed, are you ready? We've got to lean into him. Now, my tendency when I'm disappointed, I'd like to lean out. Anybody? I want to, I want to lean out. Especially when somebody I love is hurting. Whew. Man, I, I want to lean out. But then I feel God's presence drawing me in. D- did you miss the subtle beauty of the story? Jesus went to Martha. Did you see that already? Jesus went to Martha. He's there. He's always there. And what we have to do in our disappointments is lean in. In fact, we can't let our disappointment dictate delight. Because disappointment will never give way to delight. But when we trust in the Lord and delight in Him, you may not feel it now, He's there. He's there. You may not feel Him, but He's there. You may be mad and upset and bothered, but He's there. Don't don't let disappointment take the place of your ultimate hero. In fact, do you remember another story about Martha when Lazarus died? Jesus went to Martha and he asked a question. He said, do you believe I'm the resurrection and the life? She had had a transformation. She said, I do. I believe. Before she ever raised Lazarus from the dead, she believed. It wasn't about whether her brother would come back to life. She had already decided to trust in the Lord with all her heart, lean not on her own understanding, and in all her ways, including disappointment, acknowledge him, and he would direct her path. Ladies, would you stand to your feet? All ladies, all young women, all girls, all of the female gender. Ladies, as Micah comes to play, I want to say something to you as we close the service. And I know you're thinking, but you're just a man. I know. I know. I'm just a man. But I want to say something to you as a man and as your pastor. All of you are incredible. You need to hear it today. You, you do things we can't even imagine or dream. All without mom goggles. You do incredible things that we take for granted. And you don't do it for the accolades. You do it out of love. I know that. And I want to tell you this morning that for all of you that are moms or caregivers or aunts or foster care moms or mentors or whatever you are, I want you to know every time you invest in someone else, it's making a difference because whether you know it or not, you're a world changer already. You're a world changer. And I know many of you have been through disappointments. I've discovered recently that several women that I have the privilege of pastoring have lost children. I've discovered that several of you are struggling through marriages and difficulties. It's amazing how so many of you have been confiding in us the difficulties and the struggles, but here's what I keep hearing again and again and again. 
we're trusting in the Lord with all of our heart. And you know how to lean, not on your understanding, but on God's. It doesn't mean you're not disappointed, but I want you to know, we need you, you're amazing, we love you, and for every woman in this house, whether you're, you're hoping to get married, you want to be married, you're, you're, you're excited about life, you've got careers and goals, I want you to know, God has given you as a gift to every person that you touch. You are amazing. You don't hear it enough, but you're incredible. And you keep doing what God has called you to do. Move through disappointment to delight because we need you on the other side. You're a rock for us. Men aren't nearly as good as we think we are. Thank you for the one man that got that. And men, if you've got beautiful women in your life, love them, hug them. And I know some of you are separated from women that you love, daughters and, 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 and children that you care about. Keep praying, keep believing. And the ones that are close to you, hold them close and love them. And cherish them. Two words. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Don't get stuck in your disappointments. Keep moving. I know you may be mad and upset, but keep moving. I know you may get overwhelmed, keep moving. I know that there will be struggles, but keep moving. Delight is right around the corner. Keep trusting in the ultimate hero, Jesus Christ.